The last six months has been an incredible time for handheld gaming. Between the continued success of the Nintendo Switch, Analog Pockets finally started shipping out so people could have a great way of playing their retro titles. We've seen a boom in PC handhelds with one of the highest profile ones, the Steam Deck, starting to ship out to different people. And most recently I've gotten my hands on what is probably the most bizarre part of this entire trend right now, the Playdate. If you haven't seen or heard of this thing before, the Playdate is a very specialized handheld that I would say is targeted at a very specific kind of gamer. It's based around this concept of having a very high quality built system with a focus on an anachronistic design. It's a very sort of old school approach and almost like a re-envisioning of, hey, look, this is how old school gaming handhelds were, but what if instead we focused on a slightly different kind of design in this one, namely being the addition of a crank as a way to play games. When you buy the Playdate, you're not only paying for the system itself, but also for its first season of game releases that are being released at an intentional kind of pacing wave where every week, two new games are being added to the system over time. Now, I've only had the Playdate for about a week and the current library is just sitting at four games, but the four games that are currently on here, I think offer a really interesting look at the very kind of different directions that you could take with this system. And it really has me intrigued for what the kind of full first season is gonna end up looking like. Before we dive into the specific games and my experiences with them, I do wanna to touch on just the physical build of the Playdate itself, which is honestly really good. This thing is super solid. It's surprisingly kind of dense for its small size. It's not super heavy or anything, but just you can definitely tell that there is stuff in here. The body feels strong, buttons, D-pad feel good, and of course the crank itself, uh, yeah, it's a very working, smooth feeling crank. Based on the fact this is targeted at a very sort of old school game design in a lot of respects, the audio coming out of it is very clean, although it is just, you know, very simple old school sounds. Uh, and the display is really, I think, one of the parts of the system that are simultaneously some of the coolest parts of it, and also just a little bit disappointing. Uh, one of the pitches behind this display is that it does not use a backlight, but instead relies on a very highly light reflective screen. Now, the result of this is that when you are sitting in the right light, this thing looks absolutely beautiful. The clarity of the image and the way that the visuals of the games just come across is a really nice, clean look. It's like the best version of what a Game Boy could look like from way back when. But the problem is that does rely on being in the right light. I mean, I gotta say, when I picked this thing up, I didn't expect that one of the immediate flashbacks I was gonna have is the experience of playing a game console in the backseat of a car, waiting for the right street light to come down so I can actually see what's happening on the screen. Because this thing, in the dark, is just not really a good experience. Again, a real big focus of the system is how kind of quirky it is. So this all plays into the mystique and style of it. I just, there's a part of me that ultimately does wish that while the reflective screen looks great in the right light, an optional ability to turn on a backlight here and there for when you do want to use in the dark would have been really appreciated, especially considering the price point for the system. Now, as for the actual experience of playing games, as I mentioned, there are only four that are currently available for me to play on, uh, but they are all very interesting, unique, different directions. The first of these games that I played is Whitewater Wipeout, which is probably the simplest title currently available on the play date uh, because it is based on the simple idea of playing the game and trying to get the highest score you can. It's a surfing game that is controlled primarily just by using the crank where you try to not only keep your balance and keep moving as the wave is falling apart, but also trying to do really cool tricks at the same time. I am really bad at this. Uh, it is probably a game that I should be putting more time into to try and get better, but as far as the games on here go, it's probably the one that's really held my attention the least. It's a really fun, simple idea, and I'm sure we're gonna be seeing some more games that have that kind of very straightforward high score approach to them, uh, but but at least out of this initial group of games, not my favorite. The next game I played though is my favorite and that's Casual Birder. Now what really stands out about Casual Birder against the other four games right now is that it really does feel like the most fully realized kind of larger scale game. There is a plot, there is a town you're walking around exploring, there are in-depth mechanics where the entire idea is using the crank on the play date as a camera focus as you try to capture pictures of different birds around town while also competing against enemy bird photographers that are jerks. It's this really strange plot that I have fallen in love with with, and it's the type of game that I really am hoping to see a few more experimentations with ongoing. I know one of the other games coming out very soon is a visual novel with branching plots, and those are the kind of experiences that I think I'm the most interested in with this system, is where you have these larger scale adventures that are just 
somehow still kept on this very tiny little system, almost evoking the kind of feeling of playing Link's Awakening for the first time on the old Game Boy. Game number three is Crankin's Time Travel Adventure. This is more or less a puzzle game that is built around the entire idea of using the crank to control time. By winding it one way, you're gonna go forward in time. By winding it the other way, you're gonna go back. And you need to time how you do this in order to get around a number of different obstacles and ultimately complete each of the game's challenges. I think this is the one game that I saw the most footage from when Playdate was doing a lot of their initial kind of, hey, check out these different titles we have. Visually, at least relative to this game's style of graphics, it looks really nice. The gameplay is fun. There are a few parts of it that can get maybe a little frustrating with just the timing of when you want to pause time, but that's kind of the point. You want to make some of these experiences last as long as possible because these are very micro-focused games. Now, the last game that I'd be able to play is Boogie Loops, which is actually another one I'm not particularly great at, primarily because it's not necessarily a game in the traditional sense as much as it is a very simple music synthesizer that also includes the ability to program a dance routine for a bunch of animals and a slice of pizza to just move around to. In a lot of ways, I think this is actually the most endearing title on here right now, because even though I'm personally not really great at doing music stuff like this, uh, the concept of what you can do with it and the type of different things that people can create and share with it is a really charming concept. Overall, so far, Casual Birder and Crankin's Time Adventure have definitely been the strongest appeals to me, and I'm looking forward to seeing more titles kind of travel in this vein. But again, what I think is really cool about this full set of titles is how very different each of them has been. And to top that off, I think one of the most interesting aspects about this whole system to me is how it doesn't really explain a whole lot much to you. Now, if you watched my Steam Deck video, that might be kind of funny to hear because one of the problems I've been having with the Steam Deck is that I do wish there was maybe a little more clarification and instruction on all the system's various features. But when it comes to the play date, uh, Ultimately, the only thing you need to figure out is, okay, I've got a D-pad, I've got two buttons, and I've got a crank, what do I need to do to play these games? And so there's almost this kind of very light puzzle aspect to every time you start up a new title, just trying to find out, okay, what's the gimmick here? How is the crank gonna come into play? What exactly am I doing here? Obviously, with only four games out right now, this isn't really a full review of the play date as a system. Really, the only way to kind of have the full feeling of its value is seeing that full first season of games come out. I will say, based on the experience so far, while I really do love this thing, the 180 price tag does feel a little steep. Maybe as more games come out and my experiences with those kind of grow over time, that opinion will change. Ultimately, it is a very charming experience. It's just you definitely need to be a part of this very specific audience it's targeting at who are interested in just kind of trying different interesting little experiments in gaming. If I'm being honest, yeah, it's even a touch bit pretentious, but there's so much charm going into this thing that it's winning me over so far. I definitely plan on doing an update video once more games have been released. Maybe I'll do a midpoint update, but definitely once the full season one has released over the next few months. Again, definitely pricey, but I'm having a lot of fun with it so far. Uh, if you guys are interested in learning more about it, I do have a link down below to their website. Uh, orders for these have been in waves, so at this point, any orders going on are probably a healthy bit far out. As always, if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button to let me know. Hit dislike if you did as well. Just because you guys can't see it, I still do, so it's always good for me to see and know, and I will see you guys later.